Mr. Speaker, I beg to present for second reading a bill shortly entitled Citizenship of St. Lucia Amendment. Mr. Speaker, the bill for consideration is the Citizenship Force of St. Lucia Amendment Bill, and the purpose of this bill is to amend the Citizenship of St. Lucia Act, Chapter 1.04, and Clause 1 of the bill, Clause 1 and 2 of the bill provide for the short title and petitions. By Clause 3 of the bill, Mr. Speaker, Section 3 of the Act, Acquisition of Citizenship on the appointed date is amended by extending the ways in which persons may acquire citizenship by descent on the appointed date by allowing a person to acquire citizenship through his or her grandfather or grandmother. A person cannot acquire citizenship through his or her grandparents if neither of his or her grandparents is a citizen of St. Lucia and his or her grandfather possesses immunity from legal proceedings and is accorded to the envoy of a foreign country accredited to St. Lucia or his or her grandfather is a citizen of a country with which St. Lucia is at war and his or her birth occurred in a place then under occupation by that country. Mr. Speaker, the tabling of the bill this morning is a testament to this government's promise of putting people first. And this is a promise made by the Honorable Prime Minister and member for Cassius East, I think at a town hall meeting in New York. And he has made several pronouncements thereafter, both in St. Lucia and in the diaspora. And this amendment is meant to provide an avenue for the grandchildren of persons who obtained St. Lucian citizenship by birth to attain St. Lucian citizenship. After much consultation with the Ministry of Home Affairs, with the AG Chambers, Department of Exten Ministry of External Affairs, and the other relevant agencies, the day has finally arrived where we can see a promise made is a promise kept. Just because for too long, we've seen generations of St. Lucians who could have contributed in a meaningful way to the development of our country. And they were either denied this opportunity or they were faced with challenges or faced with difficult and costly obstacles as they attempted to connect to their motherland. Today, with this amendment, we remove the unnecessary hurdles for the naturalization of second generation St. Lucians and provide a more inviting and integrative approach to our development. And whilst, Mr. Speaker, the overriding objective and gains for such an initiative cannot be overstated, equally important is the protection of our patrimony. This amendment is intended to benefit the grandchildren of born, and I emphasize born St. Lucians, and not persons who acquired citizenship by the length of time spent in our country. It is intended to benefit the children of those persons who acquired citizenship by descent, thereby allowing for what we refer to as second generation citizenship. Over the years, St. Lucians in the diaspora have contributed significantly to the economy, either through remittances or through investments. Some have contributed through investment in St. Lucian business, as well as construction, purchasing of homes, and other real estate. St. Lucians in the diaspora, Mr. Speaker, have also achieved international acclaim for our country. And I'm sure we would readily recognize names like Safa Lewis, Nina Compton, Sir Derek Walcott, Dr. Winston Paris. And can you imagine, Mr. Speaker, can you imagine if the grandchildren of these individuals were born out of St. Lucia? Wouldn't it be a shame if these children could not be regarded as St. Lucians? The proposed amended legislation cures the anomaly and allows second generation St. Lucians to claim their patrimony. As a government, Mr. Speaker, I recognize that there are many ways in which second generation St. Lucians can contribute to their motherland. The economic power and wealth of talent among St. Lucians and their children in the diaspora, in the diaspora have not been fully realized because of the absence of an avenue to legally and systematically tap into these resources. With this amendment, the grandchildren of born St. Lucians will be provided with a long-awaited avenue to regularize their status as naturalized St. Lucians, and hence be afforded the same opportunities and privileges as born St. Lucians. It will also allow for more seamless, it will also allow for them to more seamlessly contribute their time, their talents, and their resources to St. Lucia. Second generation citizenship will allow St. Lucians to more easily transact business, 
to purchase and own land and other property in St. Lucia. Those persons who attain second generation citizenship will no longer have to apply for and pay fees for alien land holding licenses to be able to inherit a piece of land left by a parent. In some cases, heirs to property have not claimed and in some cases they have not developed the land due to the restrictions placed on them. By allowing second generation citizenship, we aim to make it more attractive for the grandchildren of born St. Lucians to invest and possibly develop lands inherited to ensure that the lands remain in the hands of St. Lucians and hence benefit our communities. Mr. Speaker, it is no secret that we lack the human resource capacity in some critical areas, including healthcare, education, food, technology, agriculture, science, and there are generations of St. Lucians who have made great strides in these fields within the diaspora, but they have not seen the opportunity to give back or to contribute in a meaningful way to the development of our country because of the obstacles, some of them very costly, which impede their ability to both invest as well as inherit. This legislation, this amendment, Mr. Speaker, will put an end to some of these problems. The amendment will also open the way for second generation solutions to finally be able to call the land that they love their home. This will allow them to more easily connect to the country and contribute to its development economically and socially. It will also give St. Lucians access to the global pool of talent, expertise, and resources which resides in our diaspora. And that pool includes doctors, lecturers, agriculturists, urban planners, crime fighting experts, among others. So, well, Mr. Speaker, the development opportunities and possibilities arising from this amendment are indeed endless. They provide immense potential benefits for the recipients of second generation citizenships as well as for the people and government of St. Lucia. That is why we have proceeded to implement and bring reality to reality the vision perceived by this Prime Minister and the member for Cassius East. So, Mr. Speaker, it is a great honor and privilege that I stand to present this landmark legislation. And it is also a great humility that I ask members to support this bill. But Mr. Speaker, before I take my seat, I want to reiterate just a few of the things that I said there in Creole so that we can reach every corner, every nook and cranny of our St. Lucian society. All our listeners can understand. Sanu vin fe isi a hodi a se nuka i fe an amendment pu sanu ka kwe citizenship of St. Lucia. Lana bilo ka kwe citizenship of St. Lucia. Pi se bil sa la ka ba i moun pu voa pu yo sa tounen set li siyen. So, we have a changement because when we are at present, si Sean ni Ishli ki fait set li si, e be, i fe Ish, e pi Ishli, i fe Ishli lot pe yi, e pi Ish sa fe Ish. Mani a loa yi at present, ti Ish sa la, pa ka yi sa konside ko yi an set li siyen, paske an ba loa at present, I pa ka isa qualify pou citizenship. A prezan, sa y epi chanjman nou ka fera, la ni moun ki ni, depi si gwan maman, eben gwan papa ou, fet set li si, ep sa se sa ki epotan, yo ni pou fet set li si. Yo pa sa fet lot peyi. So se ti ish an moun ki fet set li si, ki ka isa jwen, yo ki ka isa qualify pou sa jwen citizenship a ba chanjman sa nou ka fe la ou dia. E pi nou ni an sitiwasyon ko nou ni moun, nou ni plizye set li siyen, e pi plizye ti ish set li siyen, e pi yo ka wete lot peyi. E pi se moun sa la ni an chay bagay dat yo sa fe bay set li si. Se moun sa an talan, yo ni la jan, yo vle vin depase la jan yo set li si, yo vle vin vest la jan yo set li si. Me, because of manye, loa ye a prezan, yo pa sa vini, ben si yo vini, yi ka yi kote yo telman la jan, dat yo pa, yi pa ekwaje yo pou vini. E pi sa nou ka fe o dia, yi ka yi ouve la pot la bay se moun sa la, yo pa ka yi ni pou peye sa nou ka kwe Alien Land Holding License, e pi yo ka yi sa, yi ka yi fe rol bagay la plieze bay yo, so yo sa vye vin mene la jen yo set li si, vye vin achete te set li si, si gwan maman ki te chote bay yo, yi ka yi fe plieze nao, pou sa inherit chote sa la, pou sa vin 
inherited churches are because he's having Batikayo Asusa. So Sanuka Feo Dia Sakai Mene um a shy bag I bon by a shy T ish set lissier, a become do lanish set lissien, a be moon nuka um kuye set lissien paske yo it set lissi pou pi det set lane merit lane et puis yo join citizenship paske yo it set lissien yo it set lissi pou uh set uh misitan de les set be rit lane. Se moun sa la se pa se ti ish se moun sa ki kay sa join citizenship. Se moun nan ki kay sa join citizenship, se se moun nan ki ni gwa maman yo epi gwa papa yo fet an set li si. So, mwen vle ekouaje tout mwen hodea pou si pote sa, because sa sa kay fe, se yi kay menen pli opportunite ban nou set li si, nou kay sa join, nou kay sa fe business pleze, pi se ti ish se moun nan nou ki ki akite isi ya. So, mwen vle ekouaje tout mwen pou si pote bil nou van nou amendment lan, nou van nou bon mater. Mersi.